very much. Thank you. I'm Ron Reagan. We spend about $8 billion a year on snack foods to satisfy our urge for snacks. Compare that to the $120 billion spent last year on the urge for illicit drugs. And of course, the $18 billion spent on the war against drugs. Government says we're winning the war. I don't know how many people believe that. Should we legalize and decriminalize drugs? Is it, just, is it time to just say, okay? Oh, it's Stephen Hager, the editor of High Times, a favorite magazine for marijuana lovers. On the other side of the issue is Rob Simmons, international program director of Just Say No. Welcome. Thanks for coming on the program. Um, I don't expect anybody to convince anybody else on this program, by the way, but this is, let's lay out the issue here. Steve, you're for the legalization of drugs, in particular marijuana. Why? Well, I think that film pretty accurately shows what we're up against, which is a very powerful disinformation campaign to uh, convince people that marijuana is a bad thing. And uh, there's a huge information gap here, which we're trying to fill. Most people in America don't realize that George Washington was a marijuana farmer, that the first American flag was made out of marijuana, that the Constitution was written on marijuana. You mean Betsy Ross was in there and she was sewing away and maybe well, taking a little hit on the side? And... I'm not saying that they smoked it, but it was called hemp back then. And hemp and marijuana are exactly the same thing. And every prairie schooner that crossed the West was covered in hemp. And every soldier of Valley Forge wore clothes made out of hemp. And when this country was founded, if you were a farmer, you were required by law to grow the crop. And in, during World War II, the government made a propaganda film to encourage farmers to grow it again, and it was called Hemp for Victory. And there's a tremendous information <laughs> You think he's kidding, here. but it, it's, it's true. I mean, the hemp is, is good. You get oil from hemp, right? Ten times as strong as cotton. You can make four uh, times as much paper out of an acre of hemp as you can out of an acre of trees. That's right. Now, the Department of Agriculture did that study in 1916, and since that time, we've deforested half of North America to make paper out of trees. Okay, but let me, let, let's be honest here. Do we, are you interested in the legalization of marijuana in particular because of all the great things you can make out of it? Or do you just want to get high with impunity? My fundamental priority here would be, number one, we've got to stop incarcerating people. We've got 50,000 people in jail, locked up in cages with their lives destroyed right now, whose only crime is that they wanted to smoke marijuana. Mm -hmm. We arrest 300,000 people a year for the possession of marijuana. It's the, by far the biggest problem clogging our criminal justice system. There are several million people, people with glaucoma, with AIDS, people with cancer, uh, multiple sclerosis, epilepsy, muscle spasms. These people need it for medicine and it's denied to them. Mm -hmm. So my priority is first, let's stop incarcerating and, and destroying people's lives because of this and then let's get the sick people the medicine that they need and after that we can talk about whether we can smoke it recreationally okay Rob of course you disagree right why uh, well basically I mean Steve's points are, are interesting ones fortunately they're they're I think misguided in well you don't we disagree to... that hemp is stronger than oh, yeah. cotton and you can get much more paper wondering. out of all that stuff's true obviously right? the point the point here and in, in, in all these arguments it's it's the issue of individual uh, liberty to mm -hmm. do a particular behavior versus the social norm and social actions and what we need to do with social policy mm -hmm. we know now marijuana and other drugs including alcohol and tobacco are extremely hazardous addictive and extremely dangerous physiologically psychologically and sociologically we got enough problems with alcohol and tobacco, and of course, I'm representing an organization representing our young people. Well, why don't we just because make of a, that? That's, well, we that's know, really we what know the broader that, that, issue uh, is. is to look we at. know that 350,000 people die every year from alcohol and tobacco, and not one person in 15,000 years of known usage has died from marijuana. So, if we're going to talk about problems, why is it that we have uh, a campaign on television? For $300 million a day, we are bombarded with disinformation about marijuana, and the Partnership for Drug-Free America doesn't say one word about alcohol and tobacco. And I, okay, at that point... Why, why not? Well, let's totally make alcohol that. and tobacco I illegal. Totally How about that? I totally agree with that. We're, our focus with young people is tobacco and alcohol are the number one gateway drugs. So we focus on that 100%. What are we, gateway drugs? Gateway right? means leading to other substances. So if you smoke the Marlboro, you're going to get heroin no, in a few no, years? No, is that no, the deal? <laughs> but obviously what that Mother's means is Mother's milk leads to everything. When, then, you, when, you interview, when you interview users of other drugs... <laughs> well, <laughs> you brought it up. Yeah, no, I didn't bring that up. I, I, the point is that when you ask users 
where did they start? They started, in most cases, with tobacco and alcohol. Welcome back. Dr. Andrew Mecca is director of the Department of Alcohol and Drug Programs of the state of California. He also chairs the Governor's Policy Council on Drug Abuse Issues. Also joining us is Dr. Lester Grinspoon, associate professor of psychiatry at Harvard Medical School and author of 14 books, including many which call for the, uh, for the legalization of drugs. Welcome. Thanks for coming on the show. Appreciate you being here. Well, you've heard two sides of the issue here. Uh, now, d tell me, d from your perspective as a doctor, as a psychiatrist, what, what's the case for legalizing drugs? Well, when I first started to study marijuana in 1967, um, I believed the common wisdom that marijuana was a dangerous drug, an exceedingly dangerous drug. And my object was to um, establish medical um, scientific evidence that, that, that established this in a way that... Um, would be persuasive to the young people who weren't listening to uh, those who are saying they shouldn't use this. What I learned through this study was that I had been brainwashed like everyone else. That, um, and the reason I titled that book Marijuana Reconsidered is because I had to reconsider the issue. Marijuana, while it's not a harmless substance, there is no such thing as a harmless drug, is so much less harmful than either alcohol or tobacco that uh, it makes a travesty of any uh, of the so-called uh, drug laws. And uh, I think that um, one has to view, um, well, I'm not advocating that people use cannabis, I think that uh, one has to balance the inherent psychopharmacological properties of the drug itself against the harmfulness of the prohibition. The fact that uh, we are arresting three to four hundred thousand people, mostly young people, every year, uh, we're criminalizing those people. The invasion of our civil liberties, which is taking place as a consequence of this, and also the fact that we are trampling uh, the rights of those people who believe that marijuana is useful to them for a whole variety of reasons. Okay, I want to get into the medical uh, issues and, and the beneficial uses, as you say, for, for marijuana. Don't the police and the Justice Department have better things to do than bust people for smoking a joint? Well, you know, you're talking about marijuana, and yet the focus of this was legalization of drugs. It's true. And the bottom line is that the social consequences of alcohol and drug abuse in this country are devastating. Um, the alcohol is legal. The other drugs cigarettes, are. Cigarettes result do you, do in Do you see a porn? hypocrisy there? Well, actually, no, what I, actually, what I hear is invitation to exasperate a situation that's already difficult and yet we're just about entering the second generation of reduction in cigarette smoking just when we're making progress in, in precipitous decline in alcohol consumption as america as a culture matures and we're coming to grips with the appropriate use for instance ceremonial ritualistic use of alcohol and it's a precipitous decline next decline in cigarette smoking you're talking about legalizing now drugs that are even more potent more dangerous but the fact remains that alcohol is that you can go home after a tough day and have a martini you can buy a 12 pack of schlitz malt liquor tall boys knock them back and get blotto and you're okay i go home after a tough a uh, tough day. If I smoke a joint, I'm in danger of being arrested. Is that fair? Of but losing your house, of your car, of your family, of having your whole life destroyed because you were caught with a single marijuana cigarette. But if we get back into this hemp thing, I, I think Ralph Lauren and Armani should be here. Sorry, I was speaking. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. They could have a whole new one. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, Dr. Mecki, you mentioned that cigarette smoking is declining, and that's absolutely true, but that's without the benefit of a prohibition. That is, as people understand the dangers of cigarette smoking, they stop smoking. Just <clears throat> so you would propose to make readily available, a, a, which you acknowledge is a dangerous drug. In other words, we know that through high times, the seeds that were brought from Chiang Mai, Thailand, during the Vietnam War to Maui, you voted at high, or pot of the year, three years running. <laughs> came, came, <laughs> came, was the first marijuana seed <laughs> smuggler. He <laughs> smuggled the best in indica out of China illegally the, through France. The bottom the line is the tetrahydrocannabinol content has gone up. It's a dangerous drug. You it brought leaves up a, a black point. protein substance in the synaptic cliff. Well, it, 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 if true. you foresee legalization, in, in what way is it available to people? I mean, is it on the, in the corner grocery store, tomatoes, apples, <laughs> a bud of sensimia? Uh, I mean, what... How do, we, how do we distribute this stuff? How do we sell it? You see, I, I, I don't know the answer to that question, but I, I think that this country has to now acknowledge that the, the drug war is a failure, prohibition is a failure, and we have to explore other possibilities. 